Welcome to Antarik Stocks, Brands and Stories, where we interact with interesting brands from different domains and get to know their stories about their brands and about their personal lives as well. And today we have with us one of the most iconic brands in the real estate and construction business. And they have had a legendary beginning and they are doing great all over Pune in commercial and uh, residential real estate as well. And today we have with us Raj Shah, director Hello. of Namrata Group. Thank you for being on our podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. It's lovely meeting you. It's a very young team and vibrant team I can see. So okay. yeah, I, I'm hoping for a great conversation today. And thanks for your time. Uh, I know you were very busy. So we came to your office and we have occupied your cabin. Yeah, But yeah, thanks for yeah. the time. Thank you. Namrata Group uh, started in 1987 and uh, your childhood basically uh, you spent observing it from the scratch. Yeah. So tell us a bit about how you spent your childhood, adolescence, how you groomed to, you know, take up the leadership position gradually. Yes. So initially, so, so I, I born and brought up in Talegaon. We used to have a lot of open land to play. So our childhood was amazing. Once we finished our 10th standard, me and my brother, my cousin brother, sister. So once we finished our 10th standard, knowingly or unknowingly, we started, you know, getting into our business. And that was like, my, my father used to always make me sit in his uh, cabin whenever he used to talk to his customers. So he used to always tell me one thing that, you know, sit and just listen what kind of conversations we do. From that time, you know, I used to understand what kind of queries customers used to get. So what kind of uh, questions they used to ask mm -hmm. while buying apartment. So, so that teached me a lot, like, you know, I used to keep myself in my customer's shoe and understand, you know, what are the problems while buying an apartment. So right from how a customer get his loan. Mm -hmm. So I, I've seen my father, uh, you know, uh, filling up the forms for the loans. Yeah. So right from scratch that they have done. So I've actually seen how important is to buy a house for a customer. So how the, the dream, you know, when, when we actually see that, it's actually a big dream for a common man and I've seen right at a young age. So our mindset was very clear. Whatever we do, whatever we deliver, um, you will be always seeing one step ahead. Like we'll always be offering more than what we have committed in our projects. Because for us, it is very, it is very important. We value dreams a lot. So that value came when we were been taught like at a very young age how important it is to value our customers and that is what we have seen uh, at the very young age you developed that empathy yes, for the buyer exactly. from a very young age yes. and you have seen the complete funnel correct uh, so when you start a new site like how do you plan its branding because every project is a different brand on its own yes. so how do you go about it good question so uh, see for a developer Every project is a new product. Uh, it's like, again, for us, our raw materials is land. Huh. So when we decide on that, we are going to buy a particular land in this particular area. So we ourselves do a Reiki, Reiki of uh, what kind of customers are staying in that particular area. What are the ongoing projects in that area? So we have a detailed survey going on in that particular uh, micro market. Uh -huh. Uh, saying what kind of uh, product is actually going to work over here. We go through the registration office data, what kind of uh, uh, flats, in what quantum they are sold in, in that particular area. And then combining that data and our previous experience. Suppose if we have done a project in that particular area, we will know uh, like what is going on. But even if we don't have that data uh, or, or the project going on in that area, we will always compare the other projects and then come up with a plan of what kind of product we want to bring in this particular market. Right. And that data, we, we give it to our uh, marketing agency. Uh -huh. And depending on that data, uh, the agency will come up with a creative uh, route uh -huh. campaigns through which we can uh, you know attract our customers. Right. And as you mentioned, yeah, the micro market thing, yeah. Uh, because you have to think about customer persona that is relevant for that particular region. Exactly. And you cannot exactly. go broad. You have to narrow it down. Yes, yes, that's true. On the same lines. So, Namrata Group has a lot of variety of projects. But when you talk about a particular uh, target audience, 
So what would you define? Who would you define as the ideal customer persona for Namrata Club? My father and uncle started this business in the year 1987. Uh, and uh, our first project uh, we started, when we started our construction, we started off from uh, Talega. We did three row houses. Okay. Right. Uh, that was like uh, my father and my uncle. That is how they started this real estate business. They had a very clear idea or clear mindset is you work for all. I mean, you create houses for all. So it is always location specific. That area, what kind of demand is there in that area? Like for example, today also in Talega, we have houses from 15 lakhs, 20 lakhs, 30 lakhs. Even we have houses of 3 BHK, like 75 lakhs also. Huh. But because, yes, suppose if I'm constructing 700, 800 apartments in that particular area today, we have around 50 or 100 apartments which are for 3 BHK also. So it is again as per the demand. Yes, we are for all, uh -huh. but we'll always bring a product which is rightly suited to that particular micro market. Talking about the branding and marketing of Namrata Group, because you take those important decisions as well. So how do you approach the branding of Namrata Group in the wider sense? See, there are two aspects. Uh, uh, one is branding and one is sales. We try and have a, what do you say, combination of both. Okay. So branding exercise is more uh, done on the digital level or uh, on the site level, okay? Yeah. Like the small things where a brand is being felt because the, the kind of communication that we do, whether it is uh, through billboards or newspaper ads, the every uh, advertisement has a, a purpose, okay? So suppose if there is a purpose of lead generation, it will be, very sales oriented, what kind of offers we are offering or whether we, we use a celebrity for that. So that is purely a, a, an exercise point. from the sales point of view. But suppose if, if there is an exercise which is on the branding perspective, then uh, what kind of activities we do on the site which will be involving our customers or, uh, or what kind of uh, experience that we give on site. Mm -hmm. It's a feel that we can give on site that is more... That is what the customer is going to take while going back home, right? So whether it is a brochure that they get, what kind of information we provide them. It's all about the experience, like small things, like if family comes and like if we have customers coming from Mumbai, then uh, first before directly going into sales pitch, we offer them some snacks, mm -hmm. right? Because we know that they have traveled for almost three hours and right. it's better make them relax, comfortable. Now, that is something I feel is branding, right? right? Okay. That is how the customer is going to remember our brand. Right. That is what my approach is mm -hmm. giving an experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because that's what they carry uh, yeah, with, exactly. away with. Yeah. The experience, yeah. the memory yeah. of exactly. how that brand interacts. Right. 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 And uh, talking about different forms of advertisement. Mm -hmm. So, the, uh, billboards, as as you were discussing, we only see mostly construction companies or either it's jewelries who are promoting themselves on this uh, OOH platform. Yeah. Uh, so what's your experience? Which platform has given you better returns? Digital, OOH or other platforms? Again, a very tricky question. But uh, see, I will tell you one thing. This is a traditional media, OOH. New media is, of course, digital media. Okay. Wherein, uh, wherein you will find people the most, right? It's a combination. I mean, I would never say which media has worked. Of course, digital is overpowering today for you. If you want to reach to masses, it is very easy on your fingertips to reach lakhs of people at one uh, in, within a moment. Uh, but at the same time, the traditional media also, it is important because it is also going to hammer. If I am tapping a customer digitally somewhere, whether I am able to tap the, the same customer out at the outdoors, like where, when he is not there hmm. on mobile phones or laptops. Okay. So we have to work in combination with the both. So today, yes, our budget spends are like, suppose 75% is on digital, then 25% still it is on traditional, traditional media. media. I, I cannot avoid that. Right. Yeah. Because you have to create those, that symmetric messaging. Exactly. That carries exactly. forward to yeah. the yeah. outside yeah. world. Yeah. So Navrata Group has had a long history of uh, doing so many projects and along the way marketing campaigns for each. So what would you say are your top learnings 
in the past years? We have learned a lot. Uh, see, again, uh, every project has given us a new experience. Or, for example, if we have done a building which is of around 15 or uh, 20 apartments uh, in a project, even that also has given us a very good uh, learning experience, I would say. Uh, there is this project that we did in uh, Talega, which is an, uh, I guess we have done 16 apartments and a combination of 2 and 3 BHK. Again, when in a smaller flat, flat like an uh, apartment scheme, we, could, we cannot accommodate many amenities or, you know, uh, open spaces uh, that we can offer. But there, uh, our landscape architect very smartly utilized the green belt area. He entirely created a new landscape area out of which and the kind of feedbacks that we got from our customers were amazing so how well we can integrate those outer spaces with the uh, you know uh, actual people that they are living in that is very important from the smallest project we understood one thing how we can create those outer spaces how well we can create is more important it is not about how many amenities you provide yeah. so in that project we have not provided amenities per se i don't have a swimming pool or a i have a very small clubhouse yeah. but then the kind of open spaces that we have created yeah. that is something people have appreciated a lot on, on that lines now since we are coming up with new projects in in ratni in uh Pimple Sadagar area we have considered uh what kind of amenities or how well we can develop those amenities. That is what our, uh, what is a design element involves. Because, yeah, you have to make the best use of the available correct, space. Correct, correct. And uh, not every time we can have spacious, you know, amenities. Exactly. But yeah, as you yeah. said, even in uh, compact spaces, we can create the best experience. Yes. The yes. design. Yes. yes. Um, so, Raj, can you give us an overview of, uh, you know, how in the recent years the Indian real estate scenario is changing? If we'll talk about today's market, real estate is very good. As we can see today, everywhere, the, the demand side is huge side. But why there is such a huge drive in demand? First of all, if you look at in terms of economic perspective, our country right now has youngest population. Okay, so we are huge number of young population today, uh, which is basically earning population. And that is the re reason why there is a demand in every sector. So... Vis -a -vis, there is also a huge demand in real estate sector. In recent times, uh, we have faced pandemic. Due to COVID, everyone came to know the necessity of housing. Okay, so first of all, you must have seen a couple of years back, there were a lot of houses which were compact in size, smaller in size. You, sh you would have seen the ads, flats from 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs, 20 lakhs. Right. One hour okay. case. One arc and stuff, which you will not see now much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the the basic reason why is because people understood that they they want to have their own space, which is bigger in size, wherein they can comfortably you know uh, move around and utilize the space. And that is the reason why there is a huge drive in the bigger size apartments, or we we you can say right fit apartments. Got when Maharira came, it yeah. was a you know big change for real estate companies, and we also saw that advertising. And marketing uh, for these companies also mm -hmm. was affected because of lots of restrictions and rules. So how was your experience at that time? I would say some certain kind of regulation was much needed for our industry. Basically, when Maharera came, actually we can say that you know real estate mm -hmm. industry is an industry. Okay, though we don't have that kind of status right now. But then yes, we can call it as an industry because we come under certain kind of regulatory board which governs us. And see, for a developer who are very clear about their projects, their product, and what they are offering for the customers. Even Maharera, even if it was not there, they used to always follow that. But then, since Maharera came into picture, every one of us came into one single uh, uh, format wherein we are supposed to, like, there is an accountability. Accountability of what kind of delivery we are delivering to our customers, what kind of timelines we have set, and at every stage of the project, we are supposed to be very open and clear with our customers. I would say it, it has been a very positive effect on the real estate industry due to Maharera. Right. Because earlier there were cases where there was a difference between what was promised yes. in the holdings and ads and what yes. was delivered. Yes. So I think that has gone down drastically. Yes. So, so you will see a lot of ads right now uh, wherein it is very clearly mentioned what we are delivering uh -huh. or what we are going to, what kind of amenities we are going to do. 
what kind of phased construction we are going to do. So pre previously, suppose if I am doing a project which is size of 20 acres and I am giving 100 amenities or 100 facilities, amenities that we are going, but when we are going to get delivered, it was not mentioned ever. Today, we are mentioning everything at what particular stage, what kind of amenity has, what kind of timelines. Hmm. So today, the buyer is very clear. Hmm. He has a clear information that what he is going to get and at hmm. what time. Correct. And when it comes to, let's say, a first-time home buyer, right, in India, uh, home buying is a big decision. Right. What would be your advice for a first-time home buyer from the location perspective or other amenities? What checklist they should follow? I would say never compromise on the space that you are actually need because I've I've seen in my entire career that uh, many customers first they come and buy an apartment which is which is suiting their budget or maybe they are compromising because that budget doesn't permit. But then at the end of the project when we are supposed to deliver maybe in the in the span of two and three years then they are coming in back and saying that is there by any chance we can go back and you know buy a bigger apartment because now that their budget permits. So, see, it is very important to understand. I know that while you are buying an apartment, you have to run with your budget. But then compromising on the size will not help you. It's okay. Maybe you can go thoda sa, a kilometer or two kilometer further ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then buy an apartment which is uh, suited for you or the size that you want. Uh, don't compromise on that part. Second most important thing is always go for a reputed developer you should always look out for the history of what kind of delivery the developer has done maybe please go and visit their past projects uh, do your own research work regarding uh, whether the projects are sanctioned now since rera is there in place so uh, all those uh, you know questions are actually answered and you can always check it online if you're going to buy a apartment which is a couple of buildings are already constructed you can go and ask the uh, existing customers, how uh, the developer's approach is, what kind of, uh, whether he has delivered everything or not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those things will actually give you confidence about that particular developer. And that is how you can take the decision. All right. Because uh, many people invest the life savings on exactly. it. Better to spend some time on researching and going for the bigger space instead of regretting it later. Right. Exactly. And talking about uh, the today's generation, uh, there's also this debate going on, which is also fueled by a lot of financial influencers, you know, who uh, teach people about how to manage their finances and how renting is better than buying. That's a huge debate going on, especially among the young generation. So what's your take on that? Yeah, interesting question. Many of us ask, many of my customers do ask this particular question that my EMI is, say, for example, 50,000 and my rent is around 20, 25,000. Why am I supposed to buy a new house if? my rentals are low hmm. okay suppose if i buy an apartment today i'm going to pay the emi and probably in seven to eight is is what we have seen that with the increments and everything uh, individual will easily repay the entire loan hmm. in seven to ten years maximum that means he has owned his apartment interest fee after seven to ten years so are you actually going to create your wealth or accumulate your wealth that after 10 years or 7 years, you will be able to buy the same apartment. Right. And the answer is no, you won't be. Now, younger population is buying apartment. And you will see, history will tell you, real estate has always given you money. Simplest example, I've seen many people coming and buying an apartment of 1 BHK for themselves. Why? Because they are buying 1 BHK today because after 7 to 10 years down the line, when they want to buy a bigger apartment, this one BHK is going to help them create a, a what do you say, a down payment value for that. Right. You you have to simply understand one thing that whether your money is growing or not, uh -huh. you have to have that uh, thing in your mind. Okay, if your money is lying idle, mm -hmm. it is never going to go. Bank interest is not even more than five percent today, right? right? And considering the real estate uh, averagely across the period of say twenty years, you will always see three four jump which normally your money every is not going to keep. Not you. that asset is going to give you back. Exactly. Plus, it is also going to give you a rental income, right? Mm -hmm. So, it is always worth buying an apartment. Right. Yeah. For your future, basically. Exactly. Talking about buying their dream house, affordable housing is also becoming a significant challenge for many people. So, how do you deal with this challenge of building affordable homes 
but still maintaining its quality within a very restricted budget our standards are very set so like for example uh, what we will change is we will change the amenities or we will build the amenities in such a way that it won't be a burden on the society okay or it will, it won't cost an exorbitant on the maintenance part of it okay so while uh, designing an apartment or uh, designing a particular project so for an affordable project we won't have an amenity like swimming pool or maybe uh, you know too many like luxurious gym or maybe ac banquet hall we won't have those amenities but we will definitely have amenities like basketball court or outdoor uh, play areas which won't cost much which are easy to maintain but yet uh, they are very important for the uh, people or children uh, living in the society see affordable doesn't mean using substandard material the cost of the apartment is less because it is outside the city limits okay and that is the reason why it will be affordable to the customers even affordably doesn't mean cramping up or reducing the size of the apartment okay we always have to create a right size apartment because see whether you stay in city or you stay outskirts it is important to understand or you need of the space is always going to be the same right so we will always go for the uh, places where the land prices are cheaper wherein we can create the same size of apartment we can offer it at a cheaper price that's it mm-hmm. that was yes we will be creating an affordable project but there won't be any compromise on the specification part of it right yeah the quality as well yeah that should always so i mean you will be surprised to know that all our projects whether they are in the affordable segment segment or not we we give tex- texture uh-huh. and that is the the thing that we have learned see initially we used to get complaints like you know water sink pages uh-huh. uh, because the kind of rivers and that we get okay during the rainy season it is very difficult to get pure uh, river sand uh-huh. it has lot of silt content right and when that kind of sand is used for construction for plasters it will create hairline cracks uh-huh. and eventually that is going to develop uh, into bigger cracks and water seepage issues right. so over the period of time we understood if we want to eliminate this particular thing we don't want the uh, seepages we should instead of using normal paints we should go for texture paint Uh-huh. now a texture paint is going to typically cost you 40 rupees a square foot more than going to use a normal paint but then i cannot do okay for affordable projects i won't use it and for luxury projects i will use no uh-huh. because ultimately it is going to hit my brand value right? right i cannot deliver a product which is cheaper at cost so it will have a seepage issue no and that's the reason why we we decided that we will be using texture paint only in the projects uh-huh. so whether it is a, an apartment which is costing 15 lakh rupees or a 3 crore we have texture like, sure. so that was the set, standards are set there we will never compromise those are the values values you never compromise exactly. exactly that's great because many uh, construction companies they you know overlook this fact yeah that you know how it's going to affect their brand value in the long run yeah for shorter term returns they overlook this fact and it hits them back yeah we always tell our buyers to look into this see experience matters a lot uh-huh. we and as i said earlier also yes we have done mistakes and we have learned from our mistakes okay it is very important how we adapt mm. in future so all our projects we, we have learned from each and every projects and then we have adapted ourselves mm. so and that is how the standardizations are done right and that's very important one more important aspect uh, when it comes to houses is vastu shastra so uh, what's your experience when you come across buyers is vastu shastra a very big deal or not a big deal in recent times and if so how do you ensure that your houses are vastu compliant each and every in our indian culture you will see vastu has played a very important role we always uh take good decisions on the auspicious day so yes vastu plays a very important role in indian real estate so we as a a uh, developer we we go for basic things basic things like how how is the entry of an apartment whether it is east west facing whether it is north facing that is very important planning wise how how is our living and dining area spaced the windows are whether they open to the south west or north east so that the wind flow always remains the same so we keep these basic aspects in our mind whether the kitchen is uh, or uh, is on the eastern part of the mm-hmm. apartment so that in the morning sun rays falls into the kitchen so these aspects 
we always consider and we try and see that at least 80% of the apartment is pass to compliant entirely like if there are four apartments on a core three will be 100% pass to pass compliant to one will be not 100% right. but we try and achieve that kind of planning that all the apartments will be at least 80% 80% of, pass yeah, to pass to compliant which is very basically like widely accepted mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. everyone right. i know namrata group in itself is a legendary brand but uh, you know on a personal level everyone looks to uh, say bigger players or idols in the market or maybe international brands so uh, what are your thoughts on uh, trying to implement some international standard practices in india and if so like is it possible to do that or india has a lot of regulatory compliances which will not allow you to do innovation in real estate well uh, in terms of technology if you say yes india is very much open in terms of adopting new technologies so today uh, i remember when we were doing one of our project called eco city which is in uh, talegaon varale area so this must be i guess 11 12 years back i am mostly look after the marketing part and my brother looks after the uh, construction part and we were debating on uh, whether to utilize uh, elephant technology or not and uh, i was like why to uh, implement such an expensive technology in place like talega and he was explaining me on what kind of cost implications or what kind of uh, delivery we will be getting in that particular locality that will be phenomenal we adopted that technology maybe 11 years back so if i would say yes uh, india is pretty much uh, at that time we got all that material from korea and today due to make in india and uh, our government policies all those materials are now being manufactured in india itself so yeah. yes i have seen that uh, phase right from importing to now again fetching that material in india itself mm-hmm. so yes we have uh, we have come a long way uh, in terms of technology today everyone is using rnc and uh, everyone is quality conscious mm-hmm. so technology has played a very important role in delivering the faster i mean faster construction uh, cycle uh, that has worked very well for us yeah right. and in the past decade itself we have seen a lot of progress yes you know yes. things have sped up and yes. so i'll ask you a bit of a controversial question so when it comes to construction companies that's a common notion among the common janta that uh, real estate companies are intertwined with uh, politicians or say local goals because you know unke bina aap kaam nahi kar sakte you can't start a project so these are the kind of things that we hear as a market but what's the actual ground reality that is never a thing i mean we have never faced any of such issues in the real estate what kind of issues are there there are issues related to land owners huh. see if if a developer is very clear about his documentation and and the way we treat our customers we are also supposed to treat our land owners in the similar manner see at, at day one when we are very open with our land owners of what we are going to offer them and what uh, suppose if we are into jvs or any, then uh, we won't see any kind of issues uh, with the land owners or our suppliers uh, you know this it's a notion that you know uh, there is an excess of uh, mm-hmm. local politician and developer no in fact local politicians today every politician is working for their in their constituency they are working for their uh, people they mitigate their issues with the developers or they try and see that what, how how the community living is more better in that constituency suppose if there is any water issue there is a road issue we we uh, talk to the local politicians and uh, they help us all uh, right that is the approach of the government right so they are sort of the bridge between exact normal people yes. and uh, yes. Yes. to yes. solve issues yes. solve or create issues yeah. <laughs> not not to create no 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 i'm talking about uh, new projects of namrata group mm-hmm. so what are some exciting projects that people should look out for in pune yeah so soon we are going to come up with a new project in rati which is our almost around 6 lakh square foot a uh, combination of 3 and 4 bhks amazingly designed uh, it's a huge project and it has almost all the amenities like right from squash court in a car banquet hall like see many many projects i have seen so many people staying but they don't have uh, what do you say a bigger space for maybe birthday parties mm-hmm. or any kind of celebrations so what we have done over here is we have created a 3000 square foot banquet hall mm-hmm. okay which is the need of the hour like you know 
today smallest things are being celebrated right and you need such kind of spaces so yes we are creating uh, such good space in a uh, place called rahatni which mm-hmm. is near to pimple sodagar so that is one project which is coming up another project that we are, we are we are coming up with one more project in talegaon which is an hospital colony again uh, very rightly fit around 1000 1100 square foot apartments 2 and 3 bhk 1 bhk mm-hmm. in uh, in that locality around around 600 700 apartments over there so we have these two projects uh, lined up right now okay we are immediately going to roll out if you want to buy any residential or even commercial properties you can visit uh, namrata crops website and they give you all the details in an amazing way so you can clear your doubts and feel assured that you are in the right hands when you are buying your first home or even as an investment opportunity thank you raj for thank uh, you. taking your thank time. you very much and thank you yeah